Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studio, it's time for the GNFCC 400 Insider. Connect, build, and grow with the Greater North Fulton Chamber of Commerce. Hello and welcome to the GNFCC 400 Insider, the monthly radio show and podcast presented by the Greater North Fulton Chamber. I'm Callie Boatwright, President and CEO of the Greater North Fulton Chamber, and today we are sharing a recap of our recent strategic leadership visit to Raleigh, Cary, and Research Triangle Park, North Carolina. Last week, we took a group of 30 business and government leaders from our region to meet with leaders of that region with the singular goal of regional visioning for the future of our communities. Joining me today to talk about the trip are two amazing guests. Samir Abdullahi, Director of Select Fulton. Samir, thank you for joining us today. Pleased to be here, Kelly. And Kathy Cook, Community and Economic Development Director for the City of Alpharetta. Hi, Kathy. Hi, thank you for including me. We're so glad to have you both here, and I want to thank you for joining us last week on our trip. We know that it's hard in positions like yours to take time away, but um, I think we're going to share a little bit about the importance and and why that actually works out to benefit the region uh, today. So I think we'll start with just hearing a little bit about you and your background, maybe what led to your career and what you do now currently. Kathy, ladies first, so if you tell me a little bit about your background. Sure. So I've worked for the city for 32 years. Um, actually, when I started, I thought I was going to be a pharmacist. So that completely changed. <laughs> but, um, I, I love what I do. I love helping residents and, and working on development. So I think it's it's been a great career. I've had probably six different jobs at the city of Alpharetta and um, now as the director since 2012. Really loving it. That's awesome. And so community and economic development, can you tell our listeners what sort of that encompasses? I sure can. So of course, it's overseeing uh, zoning applications, redevelopment. Um, It's also working with the businesses, trying to get more businesses to come into Alpharetta. Very good. And that's why it's so important to have you on the trip. And we're so glad that we get to work with you as a partner in Alpharetta. Samir, you want to tell us a little bit about your background and where you are now? Sure. So uh, I serve as director of Select Fulton. We're the economic and workforce development arm for Fulton County government. Uh, I've been there for the past, it's coming up on five to six years now, uh, but been in the metro Atlanta region doing economic development for the past 10 to 11 years. Started over at Partnership Gwinnett. Very robust, uh, deep bench economic development team, but had a great opportunity to come join Kathy and gang over at the city of Alpharetta before Avalon was built, before city center was built, uh, really building out the brand of uh, technology city of the South and helping to kick off what is now tech Alpharetta. So it's been incredible to see the the work that that I had a small piece of uh, really transform and grow and trying to take some of those lessons learned. At a bigger stage at Fulton County, which we helped to support over 15 cities, including the city of Atlanta, from everything from site selection services to the penultimate, which is the ribbon cutting and an announcement with the governor. So um, a variety of services that we provide. And we still get to work together. So that's, that's right. That's and go on trips. Yes, that's yes. right. Well, and we love it when we get to do ribbon cuttings for all of the announcements that both of you work on through the entire process. So it's always exciting to be able to work together and have great partners, which I consider you both. So thank you for being here. Thank you. All right. So we're going to talk a little bit about the strategic leadership visit. And let me just let you know. So the strategic leadership visit for our chamber is to take a, as I mentioned, a, a group of both public and private leaders to be able to really show some significant ideas of where we could go as a region, but also to build those relationships. So we do this annually. Last year, we went to um, the Dallas, North Dallas area to Frisco and Plano, and both of you were on that trip as well. So this year, obviously coming straight off literally the bus um, with being in North Carolina last week, can you just share with our listeners why trips like this are important for regions from your perspective and what they offer that might be more unique than just staying here and studying a community? Samir, I'm going to start with you. Yeah. I mean, uh, for me, it's kind of the twofold. It's, it's the more obvious one of going to another community or a like community similar to North Fulton, which we've done both for North Dallas and now with uh, Raleigh-Durham about learning about the good, the bad, and the ugly, right? Really having those honest conversations and learning good lessons learned. Um, It's always nice to see kind of the end product. I think about it like an Avalon. 
um, seeing the final product, but not really thinking through what were the steps necessary, what were the partnerships necessary, what all had to come together to effectuate something like that. So those are kind of the obvious ones. I think maybe what people are surprised, what I was surprised about is just more of the the honest conversations that you're able to have. And I say it goes, you mentioned networking, I think it was way beyond networking, right? When you're waking up to go to breakfast with someone, um, sitting on a bus all day, listening to different speakers, having those breaks to um, have kind of an honest dialogue about what the speaker just said. I think be able, being able to get beyond one's title and position and really get to that what are the individual's personal motivations or ideology as to why they're advocating for certain things or certain developments? Uh, I just think is so helpful. Again, helps to break down the barriers and be able to have more honest and truthful conversations so we can meet each other where we're actually standing. Uh, and then it doesn't end at the trip, right? Now you've really fostered these new relationships. We're, we're thankful to LinkedIn, <laughs> which is an easy way to kind of access and connect with people post trip. But uh, again, I, I think that stronger connective tissue and understanding where people came from or where they're coming from with their ideas as opposed to putting them in a box is helpful for for addressing big challenging issues, especially when it's regional in nature. Yeah, because a region's obviously bigger than just the sum of its parts. For us, that'd be six cities, um, also the county, and of course, all of our partners within that. And we had a lot of um, different people, diverse group who attended um, from, as we mentioned, the the local governments, the county, uh, MARTA, uh, our, many of our business leaders. And so that also plays into it, right? The group that's, that's going. Um, Kathy, can you tell me a little bit about why you think these trips are important for the community? Maybe anything that you find unique? I think that we learned so much on the trips because we get so involved in what we're doing in our particular cities. And we think that maybe we're doing it the best. And um, sometimes we are, and sometimes that's what we find. But I think going to other cities and learning, um, especially cities that have similar demographics and and similar issues, and and you find that some of the issues that you thought you had aren't as big as issues as you really thought. Um, Also, it's a chance just to be with a group that probably can help you. You may be working on something that you need um, one of these uh, participants to help. So I think that we learn uh, from each other and we learn what kind of projects we can help each other with. I mean, I think that's that's so important. Um, and of course, there may be something that's missing in our programs. Uh, we learned so much about regionalism. So I think that we were able to take away so many different best practices that we could use. Yeah. And, and sometimes the best lessons that we learn aren't even the ones we went for. Right. A hundred percent. And so that's always interesting to me. I actually was thinking about the fact, uh, Samir, uh, pardon me, Samir mentioned Avalon. Um, and, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Carrie, one of the groups that we went to visit, obviously on this trip had actually been here to visit Alpharetta to look at Avalon and have now emulated that, right. That's Duplicated correct. it as Fenton in Carrie. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Cause it's kind of the, the reverse, yeah, right? It's, it's just sharing information. So we had, um, the representatives from Carrie planning department, economic development came and visited with our staff and said, Hey, how can we make this happen in Avalon? You know, it's something that was it was a little bit scary to uh, their uh, city council. So they wanted to make sure that they had something that was very similar to Avalon. It's been so successful. So we share that information. It was something where we actually handed them our whole staff report, you know, with wow. the 80 conditions of zoning so that they could um, have something similar. Because um, and, and then, of course, they pay that back by... Yeah providing us with information and showing us their fantastic parks. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And I think that, that uh, open exchange of information and trust and, and of course, respect of other communities. Um, they know that we're coming from a, a wonderful exclusive community in our own right. And so they certainly don't mind, um, you know, opening up and, and sharing those things with us as well. So I think that's, that's one of the really cool things. Samir, I don't want to overlook the fact that you said breakfast. I think, you know, for our listeners, just so you know, you know, our, days started at 7 30 or 8 every morning and went until late until the evening and so you know a lot of people think oh you know maybe these things aren't worth the investment but i mean the sessions that we had were so amazing and so let's maybe get into some of the topics some of the sessions that we had on site one of our biggest topics during the trip was regionalism as i mentioned how it's happening in the area and what it could look like for for north fulton um 
maybe share some of the major takeaways you had from the discussions about Research Triangle and Research Triangle Park, of course, used interchangeably, but that that whole area and how they're working together to regionally market and brand. Kathy, you want to share your thoughts on sure. that? Sure. So uh, what my big takeaway was, of course, working together and we meet every month with the other cities and representatives, and we all talk about what we're working on, but we haven't really worked on those together. So it, it was a big um, point that I, that I took away that I need to work more uh, with the other economic development directors, and they are willing to. So mm-hmm. when we market Alpharetta, we also need to be marketing the other areas together because everybody has something unique to offer. And I think it was really important to see how even within a, a city, the economic development team needs to be working with the planning team as well as parks because uh, just like Alpharetta with the trails and uh, Atlanta with the Beltline, you can see that everybody's using these amenities in order to help with economic development. So that's something that we need to continue to work together internally as well as with other cities. Absolutely. And most people don't know where those city lines start and stop anyway, right? It's transparent to the majority of individuals. Samir, what about you? Your takeaway on regionalism, of course, you work as a a county player with Select Fulton. and We're very grateful that you do and and work real well with our North Fulton folks. But um, what was your biggest thought as we discussed that? Yeah, I mean, I think for Kathy and I as bureaucrats, we're a little bit more sensitive to, to city and county boundaries and, and companies and people. It's much more nebulous, right? right. And so they had the same challenge of um, Wake County, Durham County, Orange County, Raleigh, Durham, Cary, Chapel Hill, right. um, different communities. But but all of that has rolled up under the brand of Raleigh, Durham. And Raleigh, Durham translates into Research Triangle Park. Uh, Raleigh is the big city, but 80% of the Research Triangle Park is actually in Durham. So so kind of these cross-county, cross-city um, efforts to drive towards one goal. And again, Research Triangle Park wasn't established 10 years ago. This is 50 plus years in the making of very early decisions and hard decisions and probably a very uncomfortable decision. I mean, the Research Triangle Park, which is run by the foundation, is a non-governmental entity that has covenants and decides what happens with property out there. It gets first right of refusal on property. So, you know, regionalism doesn't have to take that that very traditional form factor of city, county, state, something, something, right? Mm-hmm. It can take different facets. And, you know, one of the challenges that I think will be a little bit more acute in North Fulton versus there is we have six cities there. They had, you know, Raleigh and Big Durham, and those are both big cities That's that right. can go and have individual big brands. We didn't really go to Durham, but Durham has the big brand around the bull. Right. So while we have smaller cities here, we won't be able to get that message out of what North Fulton is, right? right. We know North Fulton like, maybe intimately as an Atlanta native, and the individual brands of the cities are actually very strong just depending on where you go. That's um, right. You know, I used to do economic development for Alpharetta. If there was any fintech conference or health IT conference, you know, the McKessons of the world and others, People at that conference knew Atlanta and Alpharetta. So how do we leverage that kind of individual city brand to roll up to a broader identity, not not to the distraction of what each city is working on? Roswell's a high-quality community. Johns Creek is now building town centers. But how do we roll that right. up into a broader identity beyond Atlanta that that – um, helps and is an advantage to to all the different cities. So, and so yeah, lessons learned, but acute. Yeah, I think so. And I'll add to that, you know, there, the, another takeaway was the Research Triangle Park that had the covenants that were set, like you mentioned, for over 50 years. We have a lot of large office parks similar with master plans in mm-hmm. place. And what Research Triangle Park has been able to do is, is change some of that zoning in order to have the, the amenity space. One Really exciting place that we visited was the box yard. Yeah. Um, so they were able in a suburban office development to add those amenities and make those changes, which has been really successful. And with our life sciences, you, you know, you mentioned Johns Creek, of course, um, that has some large life science mm-hmm. um, companies. Alcon and Boston Scientific. Yes. Now and announced. then Alpharetta with the medical device companies, right. it's, it's, it's getting them together, similar to what we did with um, Tech Alpharetta. Mm-hmm. Right. How do we get those groups together so that they can have uh, share best similar- practices yes. and and all those things? No, I think I think you're completely right. And I think um, on one of the pre visits, um, you know, when we sat down with the folks in Research Triangle, it's interesting because they, you know, they were candid about the fact that when they started calling themselves that, they weren't. 
Right. Right. So it was a very much a build it and they will come sort of mentality. They had the space they knew they could accommodate. So they just started calling themselves right that and and certainly it came. So I love the story and learning about it. But also, you know, what can we take as a region um, away from that that would be beneficial? Um, So I thought that was was really neat. Um, Of course, in North Fulton, you know, we we have traffic like you read about. Um, and you often do, uh, and certainly the, uh, idea of, uh, visiting an area that has similar, um, issues around transportation and transit was something that was appealing to us as well. So when we heard from those local leaders about their transportation infrastructure and specifically their BRT plans for the region, um, how can you tell me maybe how those discussions and insights, help to shape what you're thinking about in terms of BRT in our own region, how that's going to look. We know it's going to come up Georgia 400. And of course, again, it's, it's planning for the future. I mean, this is, this is not going to happen next week, right? It, it takes time, but certainly in the work. So um, Kathy, maybe share a little bit about sure. your thoughts around that. And I mean, it, it, BRT is crucial for the future of Alpharetta's success with the employers that we have. I mean, so many of the different companies that are, are looking to bring their businesses here they want to know uh, alternate transportation. You know, they, they want to make sure that they have trails as well as the BRT. They want to make sure that they have that access. So working with MARTA to make sure that we get that right, that we can yeah. move that forward at the uh, at North Point as well as Old Milton and Windward Parkway is just crucial for the future success uh, for, for the employers that we have. So that, that was another... Um, part of the tour that was very important for me to hear because right. it, it's it's good to hear from others to see how they're moving that along. Well, they had to pivot, right? So they had a failure actually or of, a, of another initiative. Do you want to maybe tell us a little bit about Samir, that history? Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, I think it goes to show that um, uh, especially like places in the South, it can be challenged that haven't had that population density like a New England corridor some of these places in California or maybe where the politics drives it much more aggressively. You know, you go to somewhere like LA County, 10 million people, 88 cities, they've decided to put on two and a half cents to their sales tax for transit in perpetuity. Yeah. Uh, unlike here in Georgia and in Fulton County, really we're only doing a quarter penny to a half penny for five year increments. And you got to remember the, the local investment is important, but most of that comes from the federal transportation. Um, um, group. So again, it's it's showing to the feds and showing to outsiders that we have a local commitment. And again, I, I thought maybe not this strategic leadership visit, but last year uh, with DART was very interesting. Some of these affluent communities like Frisco and McKinney that are growing mm-hmm. really worked with DART, their regional transportation authority on getting some local control about the cities being able to help decide what the planning and zoning for the transit oriented developments would look like, even going as so far as to let the city pick the developer so it doesn't have to be like a very programmatic, this is how it's done in the past kind of thing. And I think that's what we're learning with with BRT is it might be a slightly different model right. um, than what people are expecting. But to Kathy's point, um, I think it's just continued to be a very critical thing for economic development, our ability to grow. And we'll see that again, that continues to to be more of a focus area is again, the population grows here. We do a great job in recruiting talent from places that are used to transit. And mm-hmm. so it's the communities I think that are pushing us a little bit more aggressively on having focus and a plan of attack. It's not just companies that are doing that. Yeah. And um, as we grow, of course, you know, you, you can feel the the change in, in traffic. Um, I found it very interesting that the areas that we met with in Raleigh and carrying research triangle park, there is no major interstate connecting yeah. those cities. Right? right. So you're talking about imagine right. having to be all on what, what we call, you know, city roads or, or I just, as they were describing that and kind of looking at that map and how they're going to do BRT, I just, I was throwing my hands up. Like if you don't have a major corridor, how in the world does this work? Right. Right. I cannot imagine. I can't either. Heading into Raleigh from Cary in the morning. That's got to be. It's like going, tough sometimes. It's like Dallas yes. to Fort yes. Worth or right. something, you know. Like, yeah, yeah, it was really, really unusual. So, so I, but they're, yeah, but they're they're of course working to make substantial changes. But I'm always surprised when I visit employers that they don't know about the BRT yes. and mm-hmm. the planned MARTA expansion. So that's, that's something right. too on the economic development side that that we're trying to make sure that they have that information. Yeah, we want to have those those conversations so they, frequently. They're making decisions, right? And so they need to know 
what is planned. Agreed. Agreed. All right. Let's talk about the fun stuff real quick. We got to see some of the very cool, unique things that uh, Carrie in particular is doing around sports, Raleigh around their arts and culture, big focuses for us during our time in, in those cities. Um, you know, I, I think obviously we're, we're hearing about the announcements of potential hockey teams just north of us off of exit 12. We're hearing a lot about uh, the success uh, that's been had in other cities and, and Carrie, my goodness. I mean, while we were there, they were hosting a, a national tennis competition. They had the soccer fields, which their women's soccer team uh, are perform on. And so they certainly are getting a tremendous amount of economic development from those sports things. And then Kathy, you mentioned the the parks and the land. And we saw a park that was just yes. absolutely a $68 million eight, dollar seven park. Seven acre <laughs> downtown. Right. $68 million park. Which, which was incredible. I mean, it I, it's, it's to its credit, I, yes. and we got a hard hat to her. So there's nothing like, you know, walking through dirt and seeing what, what the vision could be. Um, with all the things that we saw, do you mind sharing like your favorite in that sort of genre of sports, arts and culture and why? I can't really pick a favorite. I, I liked, I loved the downtown park. I mean, yeah. and, and I, I think that was interesting that they were, you know, creating a park, $68 million uh, to attract development. Yeah. So I, I thought that was that was interesting. It was a beautiful park. They had a lot of um, uh, dog amenities within that yeah. park. So I was thinking about, you know, the fetch that we have yes. as well as the off-leash, how important um, adding those type of amenities to the downtown is. I think with the, the soccer park, I thought that was fantastic. What I liked about it is they had so many different teams that yeah. were using it. So I, I, I believe with the NWSL, they said they had around 7,000 average attendance. That's right. So if you think about the impact to your retail restaurant yep. hotels, that's big. It doesn't have to be a professional sports. I mean, a, that is a professional sports team, but right. that, I think with 10,000 seats, right. they were able to, you know, really attract um, a, a lot of people to the area. Yeah. The number of tournaments, right. Yeah, coming I mean, in. It's, it's just, it's huge. So they, they even had, you know, the local tournaments, mm -hmm. um, non pro sports tournaments. So that's something big for their region. So I think that that was, that was important for us to see. Yeah, I think so too. It was really unique too. Samir, how about you? Do you have a favorite? I'm not going to pick sides or pick favorites. I think, again, it was all interesting in its own way. Um, I, I'll definitely agree on like the soccer part. I think the big takeaway mm -hmm. from that and some of these others was there wasn't a single stream use. You didn't create a performing arts center just for a city to use for its performing That's arts, right. right? It was for the benefits of intramural sports. They recognized they're a college hub. How do we leverage just the colleges that are in the area and right. some of these less D1 or D2 kind of universities? And then that's built into the SEC tournaments that they were hosting and, uh, you know, I think a C league yeah. soccer team and everything else. So it wasn't a single stream use. And again, the fact that the county co-invested in making that development happen because they recognize the broader brand potential than just a soccer field. Like sometimes we just minimize what something is when right. it can right. speak to so much more and be an economic development driver. I mean, I also thought the box yard was some of an arts and culture fixture. I and think again, so too. Originally the intent of that was just to fill up the parking lots so as people had something to eat. eat. I mean, we saw the first half built apartments of the right. first people being able to live on the <laughs> research triangle park. But that's what it started as just like cheap way for people to come and eat. And then right. it turned into um, almost like an incubator for chef driven restaurants that were, that were great ideas, but were hard to execute from the local community. So bringing in local chefs in order to kind of empower those spaces. And once they grew big enough, now they were going to go open two to three restaurants kind of so right. graduating people out. And then all of a sudden families now are coming to the research triangle park right to come and eat at these unique places. So again, I, I think sometimes we get so caught up in the single use for whatever an idea is. We forget like all these intended and unintended consequences that, that go beyond just the what's on the pro forma and on the paper there. Right. And I, I like that um, RTP actually made the initial investment for the box yard. Yeah. Right. And then now moving to the hub, which is going to be a right, lot yeah. larger right. development because of the, the success. So I think that's. It's like the concept on steroids. Absolutely. And then um, I'll just add with the sports parks. Also, you're showcasing your community. So you're bringing a right. lot of people that would not see your community. So I think that's another good part of having those large and bringing tax complexes. dollars absolutely right which is huge um it's interesting samir you mentioned the utilitarian necessity of, of building something like the uh the uh, 
the box art, but the irony there is that if I if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, that they had two James Beard finalists. Oh yeah, yeah I and I'm more than that, maybe two, three. Well, I was yeah. laughing because I'm like, okay, so this was just supposed to be a way for people to get a quick bite to eat and get back to the office, and yeah. because of the success and what it's created with this, to your point, kind of an entrepreneur haven, you've got it two was. two James Beard finalists. I'm like, okay, well, I'm sure that was not intended. I, I think they get. Free rent for a year. Was that correct? That's right. right. Yeah. 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 So you could they get, could, you could get free Ubers to the airport from that location. Yeah. It's brilliant. Right. Creating yeah. that hub. G- genuinely. Um, I thought, I just thought that was amazing. I don't want to overlook the fact that we also visited the Coca booth amphitheater. Now we've got a Maris amphitheater, so we're very proud of that. Um, and, and certainly that's, that's a huge deal, but it was, it was very interesting to go and look at different cultures around, um, you know, amphitheater and amphitheater use. So I just thought that was really fascinating and I don't want to miss that either. And, and there were some people that were on our tour that said they actually looked at that before they did yeah. amphitheater. So was we built. had, so yeah, that was interesting. The North Fulton CID director, so Senator Beach said that they had gone to look there from a contingent from Alpharetta to look at that, to see how they wanted to build a Maris. So you're a hundred percent correct. That's how, you know, trading information really benefits. Right. Um, all right. Well, I want to wrap this up by talking about our final day and really our focus on that life science industry. Kathy, you alluded to it earlier. Um, the fact that this industry is, is also gaining strength and already strong in our region as well. We've got an emerging bio and life science industry that we're seeing these corporate anchors, of course, mentioned Johns Creek, both Alcon and Boston Scientific, a lot of the medical science scientific groups here in Alpharetta. Um, what were some of the things that you thought about as we were looking at Research Triangle Park and hearing from um, their their folks, both in the pi- uh, talent pipeline with the community college presidents and on the business side? Were there any takeaways there on that side? The takeaway for me was the, the quality of education that they have oh, yeah. is the same quality that we have That's here. Right. I mean... We have the schools, we have the Innovation Academy, we have Gwinnett Tech, uh, Georgia State, and it's working again with our neighboring cities to make sure that everybody's promoting these different um, uh, schools that we have that's and right. programs because that's so important. One of the takeaways for me was uh, when we were at uh, talking to Raleigh, they said that really it's an associate degree for a lot of these jobs. That's right. So. It is so important that we support the Gwinnett Tech and and all of the schools that we have in order to help and assist. They even mentioned that there's some of their um, employees that they have are, are just um, program diploma. That's right. Yeah, or certificate. Or certificate. Even. That's right. Yeah. So I think it's it's making sure that we bring you know the life science companies in Roswell, yeah, Alpharetta and Johns Creek together and meet with these schools to make sure that we are getting the programs that are needed. That's great. Uh, because like I mentioned earlier, we have several life science companies that are expanding in Alpharetta. Mm-hmm. It's bringing that together similar to what we did with uh, tech Alpharetta yeah. so that they have um, that chance to be together and to talk about how they can grow. Sign us up. Sounds like a good thing to be doing uh, here at the chamber. So that sounds great. How about you, Samir? Yeah, I mean, uh, as a county government to another county government, it's frustrating to see how well they've done up there. I mean, again, candidly, Raleigh Durham, obviously the population's smaller, but right. it's a, it's a class B city, and yet they punch incredibly above their weight class right. in terms of delivering life sciences. And to Kathy's point, you know, we have that infrastructure not only from kind of a talent and uni- university perspective. I mean, the airport was nice; you can't fly anywhere direct, uh, mm-hmm. unfortunately. Maybe to Boston once or twice a day. Yeah. Uh, versus what Atlanta has, you know, em- access to Emory, access to CDC, access to Georgia Tech. I mean, real drivers of what could be the life science industry. And we've done just a good job on the other industries like large enterprise locations. We're probably the third or fourth largest concentration of Fortune 500 headquarters right. out of like a New York, California, and Texas. We've done so good, especially in places like Alpharetta around technology recruitment, technology solutions, shared services, back office. Mm-hmm. By that one pickle, again, is the that life science arena. And I think Kathy and I and many, many leaders like us in the region understand that one of the big facets of that is uh, existing real estate. We just don't have a lot of lab real estate. We're excited about the stuff that's coming out, Science Park in front of uh, – 
in front of Georgia Tech, but as I was driving around the Research Triangle Park, I could see, you know, several acres and 700,000 square feet of speculative life science space ready to go if you just call that number. But, you know, like, where does that exist? 1-800-LIFE-SCIENCE. I'm sure they'll, I'll take it. Um, You know, like, where does that exist for us here in North Fulton? How we, like, prime infrastructure. That's right. right. And this is not a cheap industry. I mean, they'll pay $50, $60 a square foot, which is criminal for Class A office in Boston just because they feel like, this is where they have to be in order to be successful. And well, I and think, capture the, the kids coming out of school. But Raleigh Durham has proved that you can right. do that you sure easily can. in a southern city, and we have more assets and that are that are stronger and appeal to that demographic and that industry more. We've just done a lackluster job, I think, in being really aggressive. Now that's changing. Yeah, many of us will be not only on the North Fulton side, but the Metro Atlanta region and the state will making a big push to to bio, which is a big industry trade show, just mm-hmm. to kind of really announce that life science is a big deal for us. And, uh, and, change awesome. and, and, and cities need to change their code, their zoning code, make yeah. it easier. So we, right. we did that last year, whereby if you already have office allowed as zoning, you can also have research and development in a certain amount of lab space. So I think that's important. A lot of companies that are looking for space, they want to make sure they don't have to go through a lengthy zoning process. Yeah. So. Right. Well, I am so appreciative, again, not only of your time today, but of your time in joining us last week on this trip. Um, You know, you were part of uh, another 30 people who joined us on this trip. And so I just want to say thank you for for being able to come and represent them as part of this conversation. If our readers or listeners, pardon me, wanted to find you, what's the best way for them to find you? LinkedIn, social, give us a email address or or tell me the best way. Email. Okay. would be email. Uh, kcook at alpharetta.ga.us. Perfect. That's and how not, about you? That's not fair. She's got a Chris last name. Mine's longer. So I'll just say <laughs> visit us at selectfultoncounty.com and learn about the different services and things that we're up to. We, we keep a, both that and our social media pretty active. Awesome. Uh, so people see what we're up to. Absolutely. Well, I want to thank you both. I want to thank you for joining me today and for all of the time and attention you pay to our region. Uh, We certainly are the beneficiaries of your great, not just uh, thinking about the future, but also everything you do day to day. I also want to thank our listeners for joining us on GNFCC 400 Insider presented by the Greater North Fulton Chamber. To listen to this show again or to hear any of our previous episodes, please visit gnfcc400insider.com or any of your favorite podcast platforms. To find out more about any of this information or anything going on at the Chamber, you can always visit us on our website at gnfcc.com. Until next time, I'm Callie Boatwright, and this has been the GNFCC 400 Insider on Business Radio X. (laughs) 